we mentioned or we talked briefly there about Canada. Um, you grew up there, didn't mm, you? you grew yes. Up there. When you look at the country now, I mean, are you? It, it's now become this byword for kind of well, woke dystopia. If you yes, like. <laughs> right. Um, why Canada? Why? Why did that happen with Canada? Well, it happened, and and this is kind of an argument I make is that the seeds were already the the, the, the ground was already laid. It was fertile ground for the woke revolution. Oh. Uh, and, and in fact, so much of what we think of as woke extremism actually. If we go back to an early era, earlier era of multiculturalism, that was a kind of wokeness uh, before its time, but just not as extreme. So Canada, for example, what happens is you have the decline of the British Empire, the end of uh, Canadian loyalism, and the replacement of the British identity, which was really what defined Canada as opposed to the United States, as they were loyal to the crown in the revolution. And so the loyalists, founded Canada in sort of the late 18th century. That was the basis for Canadian identity, with mm -hmm. the exception of the, the French, which is a bit more complicated, but British Empire goes away and they have to find a new identity. It's just around the time of the 1960s, and so the country is completely reinvented from scratch as a left-wing country. That had never been its identity. It's complete fiction. And the other fiction is this idea of multiculturalism. There were almost no Canadians who were not of British or French ancestry. Very small, maybe 10%. But Canada adopts this policy called the Multiculturalism Act of 1971, at a time when there really wasn't much multicultural reality on the ground. Um, and But that sort of lays the seed. It says there's an obli obligation to promote the multicultural character of the country. Mm -hmm. So that's already there in 1971. It gets sort of given a bit bit of uh, uh, steroid injection in the 1980s. <coughs> and then pretty soon we have a constitution, a new constitution. Again, that's re a new constitution which was adopted. And one of its provisions, for example, allows for racial discrimination, um, mm. as long as that's achieving a quote unquote social purpose. Now, maybe for a long time that wasn't Affirmative. used. Yes. Yeah. So unlike the U.S. where the First Amendment, and, uh, not the First, Ma First Amendment, but the Civil Rights Act uh, outlaws uh, discrimination on the basis of race, the Canadian Constitution and a number of court cases seem to show that, yeah, you can, you can discriminate against white people all you want, against uh, men, whoever. Uh, you now have sentencing uh, where somebody who is indigenous or black can have a lighter sentence by claiming systemic racism, whatever, in the system. Just citing that. Yeah. Um, you have uh, university admissions jobs that are advertised only for non-whites uh, or indigenous or whatever. So that, that's openly being done now. Now, it wasn't openly being done as much in the past, but the door was open. Yes. And I would say people were open to it. It's just those doors hadn't been pushed open. Um, so you had a country where, because of this kind of multiculturalism seedbed, uh, the ground was primed for extremism, and there's no resistance to it. It just steamrolls right through the system. Yeah. Um, now, it is the case that, that there is a conservative leader who is a little bit more populist sounding, who is currently. willing, yes, currently, yeah. who is willing to criticize the media. So the media is completely progressive. There's, there's n almost no <coughs> opposition in the media. There's one paper called the National Post, which is better, and there are small new media outlets like True North. But the mainstream media dominates to the extent, and I'll just give you a, a statistic here. So there was, um, there was this uh, moral panic, this hoax about 215 indigenous children buried That's, outside yes. the school in Western Canada. There's not a single body that has been found through any scientific method. There's not any record of any children missing, you know, that, that this that, that could be accounted for. So the whole thing is a complete scam. Uh, the media has completely run with that, that story. And now when, when it was exposed, and, and there was a, a piece that came out in the National Post saying, look, this isn't, we haven't got any evidence here. There were no, no uh, other media were willing to take down stories or recant or anything. And in a poll that I've, in a study which is going to be coming out soon, um, roughly 65%, two thirds of Canadians believe in the 215 mass graves myth. So the entire country has been diluted by this myth. Mm. And the Conservative Party is unwilling. Uh, even this new so-called populist 
leader is unwilling to take on that sacred cow. I mean, so you've got mass delusion in the media and in the political class. Now, it is true that this conservative leader is probably going to win the election and Trudeau's going to go. That's good. But it's still not particularly radical. And what's happening in the schools, in the government, this indigenous religion uh, is not really being challenged. And you've got mass migration on a scale that would make the British seem restrictive. Um, so, you yeah. It's, don't hear much about yeah. that here with Canada. You hear about America and yeah. here, of course, but not Canada. Yeah. I mean, a country with, you know, maybe two thirds of Britain's population with a 1.2 million newcomers coming last year. I mean, you know, essentially now, even the even the national bank economists are saying we could be creating an economic trap that is going to damage the country. Like even the respectable technical economists mm. are saying this is ter this is terrible. And and the house the housing crisis is is worse than Britain's. And they're saying Look, there's just no way we can house these people. You know, and it's not just immigrants. It's temporary workers. It's students. You've just got this massive wave, and even the Conservative Party, because of the so-called immigration consensus, right, was so a, a taboo over uh, reducing immigration, they're not willing to go against Trudeau. Uh, and the whole system is completely out of control. There is a populist party. Problem is, in a way, that people are so keen on getting rid of Trudeau, which I understand, the guy is revolting. So if the priority is to get rid of this person, you have to go with the most yes. likely candidate. And yes. that's the problem. So because Trudeau is so awful, people just want him out. So fine, you vote for the Conservatives, but the Conservatives are have no real incentive necessarily to be tough on migration or on woke. What is the name, just for future reference, yeah. what is the name of the Populist Party? Oh, the, the Populist Party is called the People's Party of Canada, PPC. Right. Uh, and they're very good. Um, but I don't think they'll get a break until the Conservatives get in and people see that they're not doing anything on these issues. Thank you very much for that uh, analysis. Thank <laughs> Thanks, Peter. Uh, that's it for today. Thanks.